my little self gonna be 43 in about two months and this is the best shape I've ever been in, period. And, and it's the best shape spiritually in, in harmony that I've been in for a very, very long time, at least before life's things came. And at this junction, life's things have come. And I, I feel great. I feel thankful. I'm, my, my, my mind is like blown away at not even the peace that I have, but the harmony I have in my life. It's really beautiful. Growing up in the neighborhood I grew up in, we were like one of one black family. Until I was about uh, maybe 10 or 11, there was like one other black family. And then it was maybe the end of junior high where more people of color started kind of coming into the neighborhood. But I, I experienced a lot of racism, um, being called the N-word more than times you could imagine. And I think acting for me was like, you know, you, you wanna be on the dance team or you wanna be a cheerleader or you wanna do this sport or that sport. And I realized that I was never gonna really feel safe in those spaces at that time. And so my mom put me in as kind of a hobby as a child. And I knew it was something that I wanted to do. And I knew that I loved like being a ham and being in front of the camera and I was very overconfident. I remember being 14 and I remember I had been acting since I was four at that point and I had done some things. And every time I would go in auditions, I never really got the opportunity to do drama. And, and it always felt like they think I can't do it. I'm like, just pick me, just give me a chance. I'll show you, I can do it. And I did the table read for Eve's Bayou when I was 10 years old and I played Eve. And I remember like calling Miss Casey like every year and I'm like, are they gonna do the movie this year? Cause they were still trying to find funding. And by the time the movie was getting done, I was 14 and I was like, okay, I gotta be Sicily. I gotta get this role of Sicily. And to go in and to get it and to feel validated in that way. I just remember thinking like, okay, I finally got a chance and I finally got picked. Thank you for inviting us. We actually used to come here all the time, right, Thomas? Let's just order. I just want to have a nice night. I've known Tyler for a couple years now. Tyler's always been great. Like, he's someone who just texts me and he's like, hey, sis, love you, thinking about you, pouring into you. He's been that way for years. And then we've been trying to find a project for a number of years. And it was just about finding the right thing. And so when he reached out to me with this, and I was like, divorce in the black, I'm going through a divorce, but okay. And then I read it and I was like, you know what? I love the character, I love the journey. I love that it's like a genre thriller that's like kind of my favorite genre. And I really wanted to work with Tyler. And so I was like, yes, I would love to do this. And and I also felt in some ways that it would be therapeutic. You know, I was like, I understand exactly where she's at and I know how to get to that place and go to that place. It also, crazy enough, was fun. Um, and it just was a beautiful experience. You have taught me since I was a little girl to be a good wife. You think you stop, stop. That boy put his hands on me. But what happens when that's not enough? And when it comes to the movie, I don't look at it as a movie about domestic violence, but I do think that that is something that's important, that's highlighted in it. And I hope that women who do see that feel empowered in that. Um, but for me, the thing that I connected to the most about the character was rebuilding myself and rebuilding Ava and discovering that no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, or no matter what's been done to you, that you are worthy and you are lovable and you're gonna be okay and you will get through and you know what? You not only get through, you'll probably be even better than you were before. And you know, if God has allowed it, then you will come through it. And that to me is what resonated the most about the movie and you know, that's why I was really proud to do it. I didn't realize how deep in the red I was. When this divorce is over, I wanna be in the black. I definitely had to stretch myself on the domestic abuse part, you know, but on the part that was about divorce specifically, um, I understood that. I understood that devastation. I understood that pain. And it's not, you know, like, it's not similar in my life where, you know, my ex-husband is a wonderful human being, a beautiful human being. But nevertheless, I still was incredibly hurt. I still was incredibly devastated. I was still was incredibly angry, as I'm sure that he was as well. Guys together right here, guys. The way I remember it is there's, you know, the complete grief, the denial, um, and then eventually the acceptance, and then the, the courage, and the changing of the attitude and the shifting. 
and then there's embracing what is currently happening, and then there's tons of self-reflection and knowing that you're a little bit wounded, but that you will work through it, and there's nothing that I regret about my marriage, and there's nothing I regret about the person that I married. I'm actually very, very thankful for that experience and how it's helped me grow, and I'm thankful for what I gave to him, and he's thankful for it. And I'm thankful for what he gave to me, and he knows that I'm thankful for it. And we're still like friends, and there's still genuine love. Like when he finds this person, I'm gonna be happy for him. But ultimately, all of those emotions, and then coming to a place of realizing you have people who love you, you have people who uh, wanna support you, who wanna carry you, who wanna hold you and that's forever no matter what, it does help you get back on your feet and it does help put you in a place of like resetting your life. And even now I haven't figured it out at all. Um, and you know, I didn't anticipate falling in love again, um, at least not at that time. There's moments where I'm with Jonathan and we have a moment and, I, and I'm thankful to what I learned in that relationship so that I can now implement it. We met at an event. <laughs> we met at an event. I'm not gonna get too into it, but yeah, and it just was instant chemistry, but I wasn't really in that mind frame. And then we re-met again uh, about four months later, and I was like, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And, um, and it did. And then, um, you know, as everything was unfolding, it wasn't that there was a moment that I decided I'm gonna let the world in on this. It was the moment that I decided, I see you, and for us to walk through together, that's just what's gonna happen, and I have to be okay with that, you know, or not. And I was like, okay, well, you know, this is, this is you know, well, we'll see what happens, you know? And so there was never a moment where we decided that we wanted to do that. It's just something that sort of happened. Someone saw us somewhere, you know, going to a movie and then, kind of reported it and, and we, you know, it was like, should we shut it down or not? And I was like, no, because people have a perception of you that's not true. You know, a perception of who you date that's not true. So if this is what it is, then love, if, if that's what it is, then at some point they're gonna figure it out. And he was like, yeah, and I was like, he's like, are you sure? I mean, he actually tried to encourage me to not be with him. And I was like, um, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Right there, kids. Honestly, the only thing that I've, which I've been a little bit more sensitive about now is there will be critiques, like when Jonathan and I are on the carpet. I think I'm not bothered by it, but a part of me wants to protect him because I know how we are when we are us. And I know that as a, as a child who is a, chi who, a child actor, who is always herself when she hits the carpet, but there's different versions of me. I can be cute, I can be sexy. I can be very, very easygoing, patient, all those things, and I can let you know exactly what it is. And he's not used to all of that. He's been in the business for eight years. A lot of this stuff is culture shock to him. So, you know, there'll be paparazzi taking pictures, and I'm like, whatever. And I have to be like, baby, you gotta smile. <laughs> And for him, he's just, it's in his space. It freaks him out. He's not, he's not about the celebrity. He doesn't like to do all the stuff. He just wants to do the art. And all the other stuff to him, that's why he never did it before, because he doesn't want to do it. And our relationship kind of forced it. So when we're on the carpet, and I can just tell, you know, he's a little bit uncomfortable. I want to talk about this film, the subject matter of mm -hmm. the film, mm -hmm. and what he, he's going through in real life. Yeah. And what's happening on camera. I understand the comparison. Um, however, what I can say is this. I don't condone domestic violence at all, 1,000%. Um, and for me, I just have to leave it there because anything else that I say can be taken a different way or taken however somebody may want to take it. So I'll just be very clear in saying that's something I do not condone. Being in harmony with God makes me the happiest. I've been on a journey because, you know, going through the divorce, I was mad at God. I was like, what in the, what is happening, Lord? You know, and I, I did not understand and I struggled with that because my greatest fear was getting divorced after 10 years like my mom and dad did. And when that's exactly what happened to me, it made me question everything, you know, and it made me have to really, um, 
come to God in a different way and seek God in a different way and discover God in a different way. And it's not that anything God said before was untrue, it's that it's deeper than that. And there's levels to it and there's parts of the journey. And I've been on that journey for the past, you know, two and a half years. And it's been crazy. You know, the first year I really felt like I was truly in the wilderness. Um, and then now it's like, I still feel part of me is in the wilderness, but I, I've become acquainted with the trees and all the things. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I gotta let you do it because, you know, I can't. That has made me the happiest because that has created that space. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> my friends, my family, but obviously Jonathan, you know, we have been in a space of a bubble, you know, we come outside and we have to, and we need to, but we've really existed inside this bubble and it's been wonderful and it's been very happy. And it's crazy because even with everything going on, this is the happiest I've been in a long time.